We have always pointed to these underwater grasses as the canary in the coal mine for the Chesapeake Bay. These grass birds are like a big protein factory. They're producing large, large numbers of small animals that serve as food for the larger animals. A signature animal that utilizes these grass beds is the blue crab. What people don't know is that these underwater plants require more light than any other living plant on the surface of the earth. And so the issue of runoff with nutrients and sediments are changing the light climate for these plants. The biggest change occurred in the early 70s with the passage of Tropical Storm Agnes. An enormous amount of nutrients and sediments were dumped into the bay that changed the nature of the bay for underwater grasses. The emerging threats is climate change from temperature and these pulse events with excessive runoff for long periods of time. I think climate change may have more of a negative effect on the lower bay, uh, higher salinity species than on the upper bay freshwater species. I never get tired of doing what we do even after almost 50 years of doing this. We were running what we call transects. 25 holes, Ostara. Watch out for the holes. We lay out a line and uh, measure uh, abundance of grasses at certain points along that line. We had a die off last year because we had a significant amount of rainfall which lowered the salinities, increased the turbidity, and with the temperatures we had, a lot of the eelgrass in the lower bay died out. This, this shoal area in years past was like a solid bed of grass. What we're seeing is recovery from last year's dieback. The sad part's going to be, given this water clarity, these guys don't make it. It's not looking good. I've never seen water clarity this bad this, this much this time of year. Climate change is here. It is an issue that we all have to deal with. And for underwater grasses, the best strategy really is to try to improve water clarity. If you reduce sediments and nutrients, it would at least allow the water to be a lot clearer. And as long as plants have light, they can deal with increasing temperature. We only have two species here in the lower bay, eelgrass and widgegrass. But as we move into the freshwater areas, we have up to 15 to 16 different species. We also anticipate increasing flows with a lot more runoff, uh, changing the salinity of the bay to become more fresh. And so the freshwater plants might enjoy that and spread further down bay than where they currently are. In the big picture, bay grasses are doing really well. The freshwater plants have been rebounding because we have removed the nutrients and the sediments. This is a convincing argument that so far the progress in improving the bay is moving in the right direction.